happy, happy, happy Monday. Happy Monday. Unfortunately, this is not good news that I'm reporting on. I still don't know what's going on. Details are very limited, but it's not really looking too good. Seems like Iraq is in a, another civil war. The civil war is continuing. And I think it's an understatement. There's a lot of people in Iraq that shouldn't be together. And the only reason why it was held together because there was a strong dictator called Saddam Hussein who glued those people together by force, by fear. Now, I'm not saying that the world is better off with them gone, but at least he was able to keep some assembly of cohesion, rather it's cohesion through fear, through the bath parties, rule through terror. Seems like these people understand that type of politics or that type of policy, which forces them to get along. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing. It's just how it worked. With them gone, unfortunately, there's no longer that strong dictator, that strong bully that people feared. And unfortunately, it says uh, deteriorated, started deteriorating the moment that we went in. Now, I got a unique perspective of it. Well, maybe not unique. I'm pretty sure a lot of people experience this, unfortunately. When Bush Jr. decided to attack Iraq and got rid of Saddam Hussein. I was with the 1st Cavalry Division when they first replaced the initial attackers. So this would be somewhere around year two into this whole mess. And the issue was Bush went in, gun blazing, took over the country, and then sat down thinking that's going to be the end of it. We'll just be there for a couple of years as the government rebuilds and get control. But that's not what happened. What happened was religious zealots, I guess would be the proper term to call them, took on the altar of being in control. They were going to be the saviors. And that slowly went into United States and NATO being the aggressors. And then there was an attack on us along with a civil war of grabbing for power. I still don't know exactly what's happened in Iraq other than the tweet that kicked it off for me. Unfortunately, I had to work, so... While I am invested into this, there's only so much I could do. So this is the one that kind of kicked it off. This is the one that Jack Prasak retweeted. The U.S. Embassy employees have been evacuated from the green zone by helicopter. Hashtag Baghdad. Hashtag Iraq. Some have said that that's not an American helicopter. That is a Russian helicopter. I don't know if that is the USB. Not the USB, but the U.S. Embassy. Other than the State Department is denying that we're being evacuated. So someone's lying. And of course, some of the responses you might want to use transported versus evacuate. I've seen nothing open source of an invac happening. And of course, this person is maybe the protests are escalating. I'm not too sure what those are, if that's a legit website or not. Then, of course, this is more people evacuating. Another video of gunfire. I actually been to the green zone. I think I've been there two or three times when I was in the army. On a Russian-built MI-17. Yes, the Iraqi army as well. The Afghan army before last year have MI-17s. And, of course, here's a... Historic view of American defeat in Vietnam. The United States always leave in the style that the country they illegally invaded. Question, is there a way to legally invade a country? 
I don't know. But this might be something that kicked it off. This is from the uh, BBC. Get your head out of the gutter. It's not that BBC. Building stormed after Mok Tada Al Sadar, Iraq political leader, retires. So it looks like there's a power vacuum. One of Iraq's most powerful figures who has been at the center of long crisis over forming a government says that he's retiring from political life. Maktata al Sadah, a firebrand Shia cleric with millions of followers, announced his decision on Twitter. Several people were reported killed in a clash over his supporters, stormed the presidential palace. Hundreds have been camped outside the parliament for weeks after previously storming in protest at the deadlock. Mr. Sadar's announcement comes two days after he called for all parties and figures involved in political life following the 2003 U.S.-led invasion to Iraq to quit. His political alliance won the most seats in the last October general election, but his MP later resigned amid deadlock with a rival Shia bloc over the appointment of the new prime minister, or of a new prime minister. Sadar said in a statement, I decided to not interfere with political affairs, but I'm now announcing my final retirement and closure of all Sadarist institutions, some religious sites linked to his movement, will remain open. Iraqi State New Agency, INA, later reported that Mr. Sadar also announced a hunger strike until violence or until the violence and use of weapons stop. Mr. Sadar, 48, has been a dominant figure in Iraq public and political life for the past two decades. Past two decades. There's some people who have been born in Iraq. That's all they know is violence. There are some Americans. All they've known was violence in Iraq. 20 years. Almost, yeah, almost 20 years. 19 years. Because we led the attack in 2003. 19 years. Mr. Sadar, for he been a dominant figure for his life for the last two decades, his Medidi Ma, Medidi Army emerged as one of the most powerful militias which fought the U.S. and allied Iraqi government forces in the aftermath of the invasion which topped former ruler Saddam Hussein. He later rebranded it as a peace brigade and remains one of the biggest militias which now forms part of the Iraqi Armed Forces. Although the Madahidi Army has links to Iran, Mr. Sadar had later distanced himself from Iran, Shira or Shia neighbor, and repositioned himself as a nationalist, wanting to end U.S. and Iranian influence over Iraq internal affairs. The rival Shia political bloc, the coordination framework in which Mr. Sadar bloc has been loggerhead mainly includes Iran-backed parties. Mr. Sadar, one of Iraq's most recognizable figure with his black turban, dark eyes, and heavy set build, had championed ordinary Iraqis to hit high employment, continuing power cuts, and corruption. He's one of the few figures he'll quickly mobilize hundreds of thousands of supporters on the street and draw them down again. Hundreds have been camped outside the apartment since the storming it twice in July and in August in, in protest of the deadlock. I honestly don't know what's going on. This could be a possibility of him resigning. And of course, in just in U.S. denies report that Washington is evacuating its embassy in Baghdad. Reports are false. More on the situation. Saudi's decision to quit politics came after 
Kadem Haria, a cleric of the Satris movement in Iraq, called on his followers to start following Iran's al Kamiro Situation in Baghdad Green Zone, out of control, at least 15 protesters killed. Clashes inside Iraqi government palace, followed by Mukhtar al Sadar stormed the building after the influential Shiite Shiite cleric announced that he would retire from politics. And there's uh, Iraq sex sets curfew. I honestly don't know what's kicking this off other than you got a bunch of oil and water people coming together and that does not mix well. It just doesn't mix well. I mean, you got people that literally hate the other people with passion. The only thing that held them together was the fear of Saddam's wrath. I'm not saying this was going to take as another dictator like Saddam Hussein, but he was the glue that held these people together. Yes, it was out of fear. And that's not really out of real respect, but out of fear. He's the type of person that says, if you can't respect me, then you're going to respect me out of fear. But yeah, it's, it's quickly deteriorating. I mean, you got gunfires, you got RPGs. I think there's been a couple of explosions. Hey, there's an RPG right there. More gunfire. I mean, y'all, that's a big gun. Y'all, artillery. I mean, I'm semi invested because I did spend a year of my life over there. Just to see this happen, it's kind of a um, disheartening. With that being said, I hope America doesn't get back involved. I hope this doesn't mean that Joe Biden wants to go back to Iraq. There's one good thing that I do like about Joe Biden. I know it's hard to say. He wanted out of the Middle East. And he got us out of the Middle East one way or the other. Yes, I do have issues in how we left Afghanistan. But at least we're out. At least we're out of Afghanistan, hopefully never to return. Hopefully we don't return to Iraq. Hopefully NATO doesn't go back in either. Because that means we would have to go back in. Hopefully the Iraqi people can work this out without our involvement. I think, I think that's going to be the best. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the people of Iraq is going to be suffering for a while. And I don't have an answer other than I hope we don't get back involved. We don't need to be in there, in their country meddling. I don't know. It's very um, disheartening, very sombering. And it sucks. It sucks. Americans lost their lives. Iraqis lost their lives. NATO members lost their lives. And Iraq is not a better place than when we came. I'm not saying we completely broke it, because I think it was broken already. It was just being held in by fear. Held together by fear. But this is... I honestly don't know. It's very disheartening. It's very, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I have no opinion. I mean, I do have opinions, but it's too early to say what the opinions are. This makes me sad because I do think there's a lot of good people in Iraq. That <laughs> media cannot be played. Maybe I don't want to see it. Hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully this has a positive ending, but I don't think it is. It's not looking good. If you know anything more than what I don't know, please leave a comment down below. I am really want to know what's more to this. It could be something as simple as what it's always been, religious sex of Muslims not getting along. Because that's what it was when I was over there. You had a certain sect of Muslims and a certain sect of Muslims over here. 
they both want power. In order to get power, they have to cause mayhem and destruction. It's a power of force or power through force. It may be something that's something that simple, unfortunately. Anyways, leave a comment down below what your thoughts are. If you know what's more that's going on, please let me know in the comments down below. Please smash the like and subscribe button. On any and all platforms or just the platform that you're currently watching. But most importantly, have yourself a wonderful day, morning, or evening.